unlike a rastered image format like, say, JPEG, which stores an image as basically the locations and the colors of every single pixel, SVG instead instructs the computer on how to draw the image. Then it's up to the computer to work out how that needs to be done. So what this basically lets you do is have SVGs be infinitely scalable. So it's not like you make an SVG at 500 by 500 pixels. You make this SVG, you tell the computer how to draw it, and then the computer can scale that as much as you need to be done. And SVG actually does all of this in plain text. So if I go and open this up with something like my editor, as we can see, everything is just stored as an XML document. And like any sort of plain text format, there's obviously going to be ways that we can sort of optimize it. So in the case of JavaScript, for example, you can go and compress an entire JavaScript application down onto one line, which might not seem like it makes any sense, but cutting out those spaces and the extra new lines really does save a lot of space. And with SVG, there's a lot of similar things you can do along with changing the way that things are laid out and even going so far as changing the way the image is even drawn, not changing it so it looks visually different, changing the set of operation you're doing to basically be a more optimal way to get the exact same result. What we're looking at today is SVG Cleaner, which does basically what the name suggests. It takes SVG and SVGZ files and then cleans them up in a non-destructive way. And I think the non-destructive part is the most important. While we can go and enable destructive features, the default set of features is going to basically compress it as much as possible without changing the final result. So if you want to make sure the quality stays exactly the same, I think this is probably a good way to go. There are plenty of other applications you can use. This one is written in Rust, so if you like Rust, hey, there is that as well. With this, there is both a CLI and a GUI interface, but I'm going to be looking at the GUI basically just because it does a much better job at explaining what's actually going on, showing us things like this is why it was compressed this way, this is why it couldn't be compressed, how much it's actually being compressed by, whereas the CLI version basically just compresses it and doesn't really tell us what's actually going on. I think for the sake of a video, this makes it a little bit better. So let's go with something I know compresses really, really well. This is basically a graph that was made inside of matplotlib. So matplotlib basically just does the job of getting the graph drawn. It doesn't really care how the graph is actually being drawn. So right now it is 371 kilobytes. If I go and run the application, just clicking the start button up here, as we can see, it has a 54.52% reduction. And then look at the result for these two. If I showed you these images side by side, you would not be able to tell me which one was which. They look visually identical. And that's because they are visually identical because this is doing a non-destructive compression. So this second one here is the compressed version. And you might not think that going from 371 kilobytes to 168 is really that big of a deal. And for a home user, it really isn't. And you probably shouldn't worry about it. But there is a very, very good reason why you should be using this. And that is if you are deploying an SVG on a website. So let's say your website uses a SVG as your logo. You should go and compress that to make sure you're sending as little information as possible. While for one user, it's not really that big of a deal. If you have a thousand people looking at the site or 10,000, this can really start to add up how much data you're actually sending. I've got a couple of other example files in here, so let's have a look at those. So this second one right here is actually a kind of interesting one. Let's go and open that up, and if I just give that a background, basically what this is is some sort of very complex looking map. Now, with something being this complex, you might think there is a lot of ways this can actually be compressed. So let's go and take this, put it into SVG Cleaner, and this time it actually failed. In this case, cleaning it up actually made the result bigger. So the reason why that happened, let's actually have a look at that in my editor. It's not a bunch of different elements. It's actually just one massive, just one massive path to draw that entire thing. So however it was trying to compress it, basically must have split this off into multiple elements 
and obviously that is going to be a bigger result then. So you're not always going to be able to compress stuff, sometimes sometimes with non-destructive compression, it is going to be as compressed as it physically can be. And then depending on how the SVG was made, sometimes it's already fairly compressed. For example, this one is a pretty complex looking SVG of a tiger. But if we go and try to compress that one, along with this one right here, this is an SVG version of Tux. It doesn't look super complex, but you can definitely see how there is some detail in here that could actually be improved upon. Both of these only see about 20% compression, so 18% for the Tiger, 22% for Tux. And then to ensure you're not doing anything dumb, if we take this last SVG here, if we look at it, it doesn't look like there's anything really wrong with it. But going and putting it inside of the application and trying to run the cleaner on it, it's going to fail once again. Now the reason why this one failed is because this is actually an invalid SVG document. I removed one of the tags that needed to be there and now it no longer works. So it's not going to try and compress those. Firstly, is going to try and validate the document to make sure it even makes sense to compress. Now, if sometimes having destructive compression is okay, we can get better results. So if we go into the settings up here, and as we'll see, there's a couple of things in here that are actually disabled. Let's just go and enable everything. So this one, this one, uh, we can also go and change the, basically the amount of precision it has. So let's go and reduce this as much as we want down to one, I guess. And if we go and save this and then try to do the exact same thing again, it'll take a while to run, but now we're actually saving a little bit more space. So on example four, which is on Tux, that is actually saving 40% now. And example one is saving 60%, but example three actually is failing. So example three is now bigger. So even having destructive compression enabled sometimes might actually make the result worse. If you want to get the absolute best results possible, I wouldn't try to do this bulk compression. What I would do is take the one image I want to compress and then go and mess around with the settings until I find basically the optimal amount of destructive compression I can make that doesn't, I guess, visually change the image. I think that is the most important factor to worry about. If it's something like a logo, you wouldn't want that logo to just look different for some reason, just so you can make the file smaller. The most important thing is making sure to the user looking at it, it is visually identical. One thing to note with this GUI is it is just literally running the commands from a graphical interface. So there is also a generate command button, which is gonna basically set it up with all of the options you've gone and changed. Now, if you don't change anything from the default settings, it is just gonna output SVG cleaner, but it is certainly a really useful option to have there. In my case, for most of the things I've used it for, I've just left it at the default settings and it's been perfectly fine. Now, when I say it is non-destructive, I mean it is non-destructive in most situations. But even the most well-written software out there eventually is going to have some weird edge cases where it might occasionally break. So testing this on the W3C SVG 1.1 test suite only resulted in three broken files compared to some of the other applications that do this that had results upwards of 50. And then on the oxygen icon theme, it resulted in zero broken files. Now, I'm sure that you could find some weird edge cases where there might be some actual destructive compression leading to some weird looking files. But most of the time, it's going to be fine. And if it does break, you can always go and change an option and be good to go, or just don't bother compressing it altogether. Now, like with other sort of text file compression, even though with an SVG, you're not modifying the text file directly, I would not recommend compressing the version that you're still working on. So if you're going to have a compressed version, make sure your compressed version is kept separate. Because if you do compress it, you're going to notice that a lot of the things you've drawn in the SVG file are going to be considerably different. This may lead to you making modifications you didn't actually mean to make, and you can always go and compress it again once you've finished making the modifications you do want to make. 
One thing to note is even if you disable every single option in the cleaner, some things are still going to be modified, and this is documented over on the GitHub. So for example, things like the original indentation will not be preserved, the way that colors are formatted will be changed, the doc type and C data will be removed, and a bunch of other things that may get in the way of actually modifying the file. This is another reason why you shouldn't compress the file while you're still working on it. At the end of the day, if you are shipping an SVG file on a web server or you're storing SVG files and you don't ever actually work on them, there's not really any reason to not compress them. If you can do non-destructive compression and save maybe 20% or even 50 or 60% of space, you absolutely should go and do so, especially in that web server case where while you might have like an infinite data cap on how much data you can send, it is going to be slightly more annoying to those users if they do have to download a little bit more. And if you do have a data cap that needs to be worried about, well, not hitting that data cap because you're sending your logo all the time is going to be a massive plus. Now, this is not the only tool that does this. I might leave a couple others linked in the description down below, but this is just the one that I found had a really nice interface that made it really easy to explain what's actually going on. Some of them might do the compression a little bit better in some cases, but from what I've seen, SVG Cleaner seems to be the most consistently well performer. So, you might as well go and use it. If you like this video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here and support the channel, please go check out my Patreon subscribe, Sully Berapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.